Let's take another look at an example of an integral involving both tangent and secant, as in this example here. Let's integrate tangent of x times secant squared of x dx. And well, based upon the techniques we've learned so far, there's, a, there, there, there's actually multiple ways one could do this. So if we try the idea of a u substitution, we might notice, oh yeah, there's an even number of secants here. So I'm gonna take u to be tangent of x. I'm gonna take du to be secant squared x dx. That would then convert this thing to look like the integral of u du, which is wonderful. Um, finding its antiderivative, we get u squared over two. Um, and then plus a constant, right? And then substituting back in that u equals tangent, we end up with one half tangent squared x plus a constant. And so we see that the antiderivative would be this function right here, okay? That's pretty simple, right? Now, what I wanna do is actually show you in comparison that, you know, actually, yeah, we have an even number of secants, but we also have, we could also, since we have one tangent, we could take one tangent and, uh, the secants, and we could do a u substitution there, right? Where we take u to be tangent x secant. Uh, sorry, that's the du. We'll take we'll take u to be secant x, and then we'll take du to be secant x tangent x du, a uh, dx. Excuse me. In that situation, notice that the tangent secant becomes a du, and then the other secant becomes a u you end up with u du, the exact same integral from before, so it's antiderivative will be the same, u squared over two plus a constant. Uh, but the important difference here is the interpretation of u is different, in which case, when you write that out, you're gonna get one half secant squared x plus a constant. Uh, and so this is the antiderivative. And so then you might look at that for a second, it's like, wait a second, one half tangent squared versus one half secant squared. How can those both be the antiderivatives? Those are different functions. Well, did I, well, one of these steps a mistake? Did I do something wrong? And you can you can check the, the calculus here. We did everything right. Those are both legitimate u substitutions or antiderivatives were perfectly fine. How could this be? Well, the thing that the sort of to resolve this concern here, I want to remind you about a very important trigonometric identity we've seen before. Notice that if I take one plus tangent squared x, uh, this is equal to secant squared of x. Uh, or more importantly, if you rewrite it, secant squared minus tangent squared is equal to one. Um, and so the, these two, because that's what's different between these two antiderivatives. You have a tangent squared versus a secant squared. So notice by this Pythagorean identity, tangent squared and secant squared only differ by a constant right? They differ by a constant. And the significance thing in here is this plus C is that constant, right? If you were just to say, oh, the antiderivative is one half cos tangent squared. And you're like, someone else is like, but the, the antiderivative is one half secant squared. Well, they can't both be right because those are different functions. But if you're like, oh, the antiderivative is one half secant squared plus a constant, or one half tangent squared plus a constant, then since tangent squared and secant squared differ by a constant, that plus C makes up the difference. And so I like this example because for me, when I was a student, this example really clarified to me the importance of this plus C and why did my professor emphasize it so much to me? Why do we need the plus C? Uh, it's not just some afterthought, it is a legitimate part of this antiderivative. Without it, we would be incorrect. But with it, we can be correct as, well as our neighbor who could be correct using a different technique, getting what seemingly is a different antiderivative, they're actually equal to each other because of the plus C. So don't forget your, your good old gelatinous cube right there, plus C.